everyone, welcome to the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to be making something that I have wanted to make since I started the channel, right at the beginning of YouTube Oak Roots. This was a pattern I wanted to try. I've just been holding on to it for a long time, but today, today we're making it. Today, we're going to make the bend and snap, and this comes to us from Lynn's Handmade. You guys, this is this is amazing. It's like a wallet. It's a crossbody. It's so chic. It's so fancy. I love it so much. This is also the kit for the January Oakleroot Sally Tomato monthly mystery box. So this is what you're going to be making today. The tag is not included. That's just my own Oakleroot's tag, but everything else is. So let's walk through this adorable bag. As you can see, we have this cute little handle right here and we have a nice crossbody strap on the front or the back. I mean, it's up to you if you want this to be the front or the back of the bag, but on one side of the bag, we have this zipper pocket here. This has this beautiful little accent around it. These pockets are actually much easier to do rather than a typical recess pocket where you push it back and you have to like get the corners and the snips just right in the corners. You know what I mean? This is actually a lot easier. So please make sure you try this. If you do this pattern, open it up. Nice big pocket, big enough to fit my cell phone. And I have a pretty big iPhone. Now when we open this up, I just want to tell you that I did do this backwards. <laughs> I, I, I made a mistake here and I did it backwards. Uh, the card slot and the ID are on the opposite sides. So if you make that mistake, you can, you're still fine. I mean, it's still going to work perfectly, but the card slots are supposed to be over here, the ID window over here. So I'll show you on this side over here. We have the card slot pocket. We do have a snap here. If you're doing the kit, we are using a magnetic snap. Now I know a lot of people are gonna be like, Magnets and credit cards. No, no, no. So if you're worried about that, just make sure you have a card down here that doesn't demagnetize. But I will tell you these magnets are very, very small and they're very weak. They're not super powerful magnets. You should not have any problem with these magnets and your credit cards. But in case you're worried, you can either just put something down here that you don't have to worry about being demagnetized or use a plastic cam snap or like a metal fashion snap. For this month's kit, we wanted to make sure you had installation tools for these rivets. So we couldn't unfortunately also do installation tools for the metal fashion snaps, which is why we opted for a magnetic snap. But you have options if you want to do your own plastic snap, things like that. So we have six card slot pockets here. We have a zipper pocket here on this side. We have another zipper pocket on the other side. And then on this side as well, we have an ID window. Very, very cute, very useful. So with all these pockets, with the card slot pocket, you can use this for a lot of different things. I will mention a couple things. First, you can see I opted to top stitch around the edges. There was a reason for that, and we'll go over that later in the pattern. However, Linz did let me know that she does prefer you don't top stitch around this. So in today's tutorial, I think we're going to possibly leave off the top stitching just so we can kind of see the difference. But she was saying that once you fill this up, you want it to kind of be fluffy. The top stitching pinches it too much at the corners. So once you fill it up with all of your stuff, it looks a little bit nicer if you don't have the top stitching. So that's something to think about. If you're using the kit, we are changing a few of the measurements purely because of the hardware. So the hardware we're using over here and here and for our strap is half inch hardware. And so we're changing the measurements of this handle here and the body strap just to accommodate half inch hardware. So make sure you see that before you start cutting out all your material. We're also changing the measurement of the card slot flap purely because we're using a half inch magnetic snap. So we need to make this flap just a little bit wider. If you're going to be using fashion snaps, can snaps, things like that, you can keep this flap as is in the pattern. So this is the material we're going to use in the tutorial today. I wanted to show you the one that I practiced on though, because it is really fun if you want to have more of a fun, you know, print or something like that. If you're doing a print, just realize this one piece of material here. So you will have one side that's right side up and one side that's upside down. So for this print, I opted to go side to side like this, which I thought was really nice. I used cork for this. I used some faux leather vinyl. And then on the inside, I used this really fun cork. Woo woo! Look at that. This is kind of like in honor of Lynn's. Lynn's loves her leopard print. Uh, so I used this leopard print interior. For the inside, you do want to use a vinyl or a cork or something like that because a lot of these edges are going to be left raw. If you want to edge coat any of the raw edges, you are more than welcome to do that. I think that would look beautiful. I'm not going to show you how to edge coat in today's tutorial, but ah. Uh, such a fun bag that comes together very quickly, is extremely useful and just so chic. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna go grab a step stool so I can show you what this looks like on. For reference, I'm five feet, four inches, and I size small or medium depending on the day. 
So this is how it looks on. You can see it's just very flat, very easy, very chic. I love that it's not a huge bag. You could definitely shorten this to make it more of a like shoulder, shoulder bag, or you can lengthen it to make it more of a crossbody bag. It's probably not the right shirt to be choosing a crossbody bag with, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. There we go. All right, there we go. So it's a very flattering bag. It's very slim, very sleek. You're definitely going to have easy access to everything you need. It's not the bag where you're gonna be putting everybody's stuff in. It's just gonna be like the mom bag, the mom where I just have what I need when I'm going out without all my children. So thanks so much to Lynn's for allowing me to use your patterns on the channel. We're big fans of Lynn's patterns over here. We always get super excited to do one and we're always excited about new patterns she has coming out. Thank you again, Lynn's, for allowing us to use your pattern in this month's box. I know a lot of people are very, very excited about that. If you're new to the Oaklerds YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comments section. If you wanna be notified when new videos come out, as well as when we go live, make sure you tap that bell button down below that will send you a notification either through email or through your app on your phone to let you know there's a new video or Jess is live. Why don't we go see what she's ranting about today? <laughs> all right, guys, let's get started. So for this pattern, you're going to need about a third of a yard of exterior material and then a half of a yard of lining material. And the length of this is really important because we do have straps and we have this large card slot pocket. If you want to use a lot of woven interfacing, you're gonna also need about a half a yard of that. Um, I will show you what I'm using interfacing on and what I'm not using interfacing on. My goal with this project today is to keep everything very slim and easy to sew. So I'm not adding a whole lot of interfacing to this stuff. So first let's start with the main bodies. Uh, if you're using the Sally Tomato Mystery Box, then you're gonna have this really pretty, it's like a canvasy material, but it's a lot more lightweight. Because it is a lightweight canvas, uh, I did add some woven interfacing to this. So I do suggest beefing that up. If you also wanna make this very chic and sturdy, get a piece of Decoville Light and use this pattern piece, but make it a half of an inch smaller on all four sides and then add that to your exterior piece as well. It makes a very nice feel to the bag. We don't have that in the box this month, but if you wanted to add that, you definitely could. For the inside of the bend and snap, you do wanna use faux leather, cork, something like that, because we're gonna have a lot of raw edges just left there. So quilt cotton is not gonna be your friend with these card slot pockets and things like that. You're gonna to wanna to use cork or faux leather. The box, we have this really fun rainbow cork. You know I had to add some, some fun stuff to it. To prep this, just make sure when you're tracing this out, if you're tracing it on the front of the material, it's like this. And if you decide to trace it on the back of the material, don't trace it like this. You need to flip your pattern piece over. I already made the mistake on one of the bags and I traced it backwards, so my, my panels are opposite of what the pattern suggests, which is fine. You can still make it work. But the things you're gonna wanna make sure you mark right off the bat, placement for these zipper pockets. Don't cut them out yet though. I don't know if you can see, I used a silver pen right here. So I have these rectangles marked on my lining panel here, but they are not cut out because we're gonna be finagling this a lot and it does kind of weaken the structure of the lining panel. It's easier to just do those last. I have holes punched out. I don't know if you can see, probably not because it's very busy, but I have these holes punched out for the card slot pockets. So you can see we have card slot, card slot, card slot. We have six of these. So I punched out all the holes on the left and the right. I have not cut the slit between them yet. I will show you that in just a moment. Make sure you also mark this line right here. If you're using the kit, which uses a magnetic snap, we're going to make this a little bit bigger. And then also make sure you have your placement for the magnetic snap marked, and then your magnetic snaps on four corners all marked. Okay, let's go through all these little accent bits. First of all, your strap. If you're using the kit, we're using half inch hardware, which means we have to adjust the size a little bit in the pattern. So if we're doing the kit with half inch hardware, these are two cuts of vinyl and they are both one inch wide. So each one of these is about 28, 27 inches long and we will piece them together to make one long crossbody strap, but they are one inch wide. Again, because we're using half inch hardware, we're pretty much just gonna fold it in half and make it a half inch wide strap. You can adjust this however you want, depending on the hardware you're using. Next, we have these zipper facing. This is for that fun little exterior zipper. Um, I need to wipe off my silver pen marking on here. And then we're also going to cut out this later. Then we have the ID window. I will still have to cut out the inner rectangle, but I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. So a couple alterations here, the snap closure for the box. If you're doing the box with us, we are using a half inch 
large magnetic snap, which means we need to adjust the size of the snap closure. So we're gonna have two pieces of material. The length stays the same, but the width is going to be one inch. So each of these are the length the pattern suggests and then one inch is wide and then we'll just put the snap in between them, sew them together just like that. Then we have the carrying handle. Again, this also needs to be adjusted since we are using half inch hardware. The length of this is the same, but the width right here, this is going to be one inch. So when we fold it in half, we'll have it be half of an inch in the end and it will work well with our half inch hardware. Last, we have a cut of clear vinyl. This is for that fun little card slot pocket. It has uh, paper on the back of it, but you can see it is a small cut of clear vinyl. All right, next up is the lining. If you're using the kit, make sure you cut this strip first. You don't wanna accidentally cut all your lining down and go, oh no, I don't have a long enough piece of material. So this needs to be cut first. This is a very long strip of material. It's for your card slot pockets. Cut that first and then cut these rectangles. You're gonna have four cuts for your interior zipper lining, and then you have two cuts for your exterior zipper lining. You can interface all these with woven interfacing if you would like. However, I have not been doing that. I've been leaving all of these without any sort of interfacing and it's been great. If you wanna make sure you don't have any material that frays or anything like that, you could use a waterproof, water resistant canvas. Um, it is a little bit bulkier than quilt cotton. I will show you a tip though on how we can help with the fraying. Okay, so here's a bunch of other stuff that comes with the kit this month. We're gonna have one long piece of zipper tape. We will cut this down into three pieces of zipper tape. We have a rivet tool set. So we are gonna be using rivets today, but we wanted to make sure that if you didn't have a rivet press, you could still set these. This is a little bit tricky. I will show you how to do it, but it does take, you have to be very careful with it so that they don't bend. Uh, if you have a rivet press, you can use these rivets with your rivet press. And then we're gonna have three zippers. This is a set of four, but you only need three zipper pulls today. And then we have eight small rivets. These are pretty much just for decoration. These are completely optional. You do not have to use them. And then we have four sets of medium rivets. These are gonna be for emplacement of the handle and things like that. Um, I would say these are probably mandatory. I, I don't have a suggestion for how to attach the handle without rivets. Then we have this level three hardware kit. So I'm just gonna open this up to show you what's inside. This is gonna be two half inch D-rings, a half inch slider, and two half inch swivels. This is just for the crossbody strap. And then we have three sets of half inch magnetic snaps. We're going to have them on the corners of the bag. And we're also gonna be using a magnetic snap for the flap for the card slot pockets. So like I said, this one was made backwards by mistake. The card slots are supposed to go over here, but I flipped it incorrectly. But you can see this is where we're using that magnetic snap. Now, yes, we have a magnetic snap next to credit cards. This should not be a problem. However, if you are worried about it, just make sure your credit cards are more up here and you use another type of card down here that is not affected by magnets. Now, these are very weak magnets. They should not cause any problem whatsoever with your credit cards. But if you are worried about it, like I said, put your credit cards up here or instead use a plastic cam snap, use a metal fashion snap, something like that. All right, here's all the other stuff. I'll be once again using Tex 45 weight thread. Tex 35 weight thread is great as well. Any thread you're comfortable with, I would suggest like a thicker thread for the top needle. For the bobbin, I'm just using a Guterman thread from Joann's. And my needle today is a Microtex 8012. Double-sided tape is a must for this. It's gonna be extremely helpful, especially with those card slot pockets and the zippers. This is a small bit of like duct tape. So we're gonna use this to help cover some of the hardware. We wanna keep everything very thin and lightweight in this bag, but we do have hardware that we have to account for and we don't want it to ruin other pieces of material. So we're gonna be using some duct tape. Next, I have my silver marking tool, my air erasing marking tool, a stiletto as always, a turning tool, this might be helpful in the very end, a seam ripper. This is a block of wood and a hammer, and this is what I'm gonna be using with the rivet tool. So whenever you use the rivet tool, you will need a hammer because you pretty much hammer it into place. Um, I don't like it on my table directly, so I always have like a block of scrap of wood, and I put it on here and then hammer it in. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, this hammer is an upholstery hammer. It doesn't matter what kind of hammer you use. It just happens to be what I had in my sewing room. A one inch by six inch ruler, a lighter for cleaning up loose threads, bit of beacon three-in-one glue is gonna be helpful to hold some pieces together, mainly for the snap tab. A bunch of clips, as always. A hole punch is very, very useful. I highly recommend you have a hole punch for this project. And then I have some scrap vinyl here. This is going to be used to help beef up the hardware. Okay, so let's first work on the snap closure. Once again, you don't have to use a magnet for this. You can use fashion snap, plastic cam snap. Um, this is just what we kind of came up with for the box. I'm going to use the template. Now remember my snap closure here is one inch wide, which is wider than what the pattern piece is, but I'm just going to take this and center it on my piece of vinyl here. And then I'm going to mark placement for my magnet. And the biggest thing you wanna be careful of here is making sure that this 
metal is nowhere near any of the edges. So if you need to make it a little bit higher, that's okay. You have some wiggle room here to make it higher. So then I'm going to take my washer and I'm going to center the hole in my washer over that dot that I marked. And then I'm gonna mark lines in the slits for the prongs, there we go. And I'm gonna grab a seam ripper and very, very, very carefully seam rip where these lines are. Very carefully, it is very easy to lose control here and just shoop, seam rip all the way to the end and then you gotta get a new piece of material out. So I'm gonna take my male end of my magnetic snap, which is nice and thin. Usually the male end is thinner than the female end. I'm gonna insert that in there. So this will be you know, the bottom of my tab here, just like that. If you like, you can grab a piece of faux leather and cut a scrap piece to go over here before you add the washer. I think we'll be okay without it, but if you wanna make it more durable, you can definitely do that. And then I'm going to take my washer and put it over the prongs. Now, typically I like to spread the prongs out to the side, but that will get them way too close to the edge of this and we'll, we'll have a hard time sewing it. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to push my prongs over each other going in towards the middle, just like that. Now, it's perfectly useful, it's going to be fine, it's just it's a little bulky in the middle there. And over time, these metal prongs could wear down the other side. I mean, you see when you put this down, it's, it's going to be a bit bumpy here. So it's something to think about, it's going to be a little bumpy here. So what you can do is just smush it down as well as you can. If you wanna grab a hammer, you can also hammer it down a bit. And then you can add something over those prongs to make sure that they don't tear into the material on the other side. I'm just gonna use a piece of duct tape for that, but you could use anything. You could use some interfacing if you like, you could use another piece of vinyl. I just don't want these prongs to wear down the other side over here. Okay, so once we have that, then I'm gonna grab some Beacon 3-in-1 glue because it is easier if we glue these together versus just holding them together and then sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and just boop, 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 boop all the way down here. Then I'm gonna flip my two pieces of vinyl for the snap closure, wrong sides together, lining up all the edges. Glue takes a minute to dry, so you have some time to move it all around. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Pretty good. So now I'll just put this to the side for a moment to let that dry. While we wait for that to dry, let's work on the carrying handle. Again, this is a little bit more narrow than the pattern piece because we're using half inch hardware here. So this is one inch wide. If you're using the hardware the pattern suggests, then you will have wider piece of material here. So what I'm going to do, instead of folding both long edges in towards the center, it gets challenging with such a skinny piece of material. And this faux leather works really, really well with the raw edges. It looks really nice still. So I'm just gonna fold it in half, wrong sides together, matching up those long edges. And I'm just gonna use clips to hold it in place. I'm gonna go along the whole length here clipping together, trying to get them as lined up as I can. If you'd like to use tape here, you definitely could. You could put some double-sided tape and then fold it to really get it to stay together properly. You could also use glue if you'd prefer that. I'm just gonna clip it just like that. And now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew along both long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna start on the side here with the raw edges because you can see that's that's giving me more of a problem right now. It's a little wild. So I'm gonna very carefully try to keep it together and just top stitch right along this raw edge and then I'll go ahead and top stitch along the folded edge. Okay, there we go, that looks nice. So if you have any bits that are just a little overhanging more than you want or a little not smooth, you can trim those down. If you'd like, you could edge coat this, which is a really nice professional finish. It's like a paint. You could find a color that matches this faux leather, which would look very beautiful. I'm not gonna be doing edge coating today, but it is something that's fun to add um, if you have the resources. So next, we're gonna measure in a quarter inch in from the short edge and mark a dot in the center. And then from that dot, we're gonna mark another one that is three quarters of an inch further. So from this dot to the next one, or from one inch from the short edge, you're gonna mark another dot. All right, so I have two dots marked on one side. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side, a quarter of an inch from the edge and then an inch from the edge or three quarters of an inch from the first dot. Once you have those four dots marked, grab your hole punch and punch holes at each one of those markings. So if you didn't have rivets for this, you could do Chicago screws instead, which are, they look like rivets, but they're screwed in. Uh, which is another option. You don't need a bunch of extra hardware or tools or anything for it. You just need to have the screws and a screwdriver. 
But okay, this little carrying strap is ready to go. We're gonna set it to the side. Now we're gonna make the crossbody strap and before we fold it in half, we're going to connect these two pieces together. So I'm just gonna take both pieces, lay one right side up, and I'm gonna take the other one and lay it right side down perpendicular. So just like this, and I'm gonna line up the corners like that. I'm gonna grab a marking tool and I'm going to mark on the right side of the top piece that I'm looking at the wrong side. I'm gonna mark where the bottom of that bottom piece is. So I'm pretty much just marking right here an inch down from the top. And then I'm gonna grab a ruler and I'm gonna take the top left corner and I'm gonna go from that corner down to my mark. And then I'm going to mark a diagonal line, just like this. And that line is my stitch line because now I'm going to once again, bring them right sides together perpendicular, line them up right at their corners and clip together. Now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch right along this line. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have these stitched together, we do wanna trim down this corner, but don't trim it down too much, okay? Because if you trim it down really close to the stitching, you're gonna have a hard time flattening it out with a top stitch. So I suggest just going right down the center of this triangle. You wanna leave enough of a seam allowance to be able to flatten it out. So now what I'm gonna do is finger press open the back just like that. Keep it nice and flat. If you need to kind of smoosh it down, go ahead and do that. Because now what we wanna do is top stitch on both sides of the seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and the whole point of this top stitching is to hold down the seam behind it. So make sure you go slow and you're catching both seams when you're top stitching. All right, let's take a look. We got it caught, it's nice and flat, perfect. If you have any little overhang um, where maybe the vinyl didn't line up perfectly, go ahead and trim it down. And now I have little, little tiny tails from my thread from where the top stitching started and stopped. So I'm just gonna use a lighter and melt those down very gently. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to burn any of the stitches. I'm just trying to melt down the tails. So now what we wanna do is the same thing as the carrying handle. It's just, it just takes a little bit more time because it's a longer piece of material, but you're gonna fold everything wrong sides together, long edges together, and you're going to clip in place. And I know this just takes a bit. Try to make sure when you're doing this, you're not stretching the vinyl. This is a little bit of a stretchy vinyl. And if you stretch the vinyl, then you're gonna end up with a strap that's kind of twisted. Over time, it does straighten itself out. So don't get too bummed out if, if it's a little, has a little twist to it. Um, you will be able to straighten it out. You could also use a pre-made strap for this if you'd like, or some half inch webbing. That's, that's usually my favorite thing to do is use half inch webbing instead of making my own strap, just because it takes a while. But with this faux leather, it actually looks really, really good. Okay, once you have this clipped, once again, we're going to top stitch on the raw edge first at an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way down, and then I'm gonna top stitch on the folded edge also at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, once you have it sewn, let's put together the strap with our small rivets. We're gonna be using small rivets for this. As always, if you have a rivet press, go ahead and use your rivet press. It's going to be easiest, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with the hammer tool. So take one end of your strap and thread it up one side of your slider and down the other side. I'm just gonna fold it over once like this. I'm gonna pull it down, let's see. I'm pulling it down about three quarters of an inch. Once I have it pulled down, I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna punch a hole in the center, not too close to the edge, not too close to the hardware either. And I'm going through both layers of the strap. There we go. I can grab a clip to hold it while I grab a small rivet. And I'm going to insert the rivet into the hole just like this. Isn't that cute? It's little, it's so cute, I love it. So now let's grab our hardware kit. And if you look at the base here, you have like a big circle and a small circle. Um, I don't know, I would suggest, you could use the small circle if you'd like, or you can use the big circle. Either side will be fine. Um, 
let's see. I'm gonna use the smaller circle, I think. And what you wanna do is just put the bottom of the rivet, snug it in there really nice, and then grab the little metal cylinder here and you'll see one side has like a bowl shape and the other side is flat. We want the bowl shape size to go down on top of the rivet. The key here is this has to stay straight. If you angle this a little bit, what happens is the post for the rivet will bend. And so one rivet cap will be over here and the other rivet cap on the bottom will be over here and the post is bent and eventually it can just pop right out. So we want this to stay flat because we want the post to just smush. That's what we want, rivet cap, rivet cap, smushed post. Um, much, very easy to do with the rivet press. Can, takes a little bit more finagling with the hammer. So I'm just going to hit the top of this with my hammer a few times as hard as I can, keeping this pole as straight as possible. All right, so here's the top, here's the bottom, and if I look from the side, they're in the same spot. That means my post smushed, which is what I wanted. That was ideal, okay, great. Now take your strap and put it wrong side up. So the folded over edge here of our strap, that's the wrong side. We're gonna put it wrong side up, keep it straight. We're gonna go all the way to the end, grab a swivel hook and put the swivel hook so that the hook part is going down. And the back side is on the side we're looking at. Just thread it through about halfway. Keep everything super straight. I'm always stretching things out. Bring the raw edge over to the slider and you're gonna insert it on the side where the fold over is here, to the bottom. Insert it through that side, give it some slack, and then put it through the other side, just like that. So now I have raw edge, I have my slider in the middle, and then I can pull this swivel hook all the way to the end, just like that, very cute. So now we're gonna take the remaining swivel hook and we're gonna insert it so that the swivel is on the right side, so top stitch side up, and then we're just going to fold over that raw edge about three quarters of an inch, grab your hole punch and punch a hole through the fold over and the strap part on the other side. So two layers of strap here. Make sure it's not too close to any of the edges. We're gonna grab another small rivet. I love how cute these little rivets are. They're so sweet. And once again, we're going to hammer this in place carefully. Again, just making sure you do everything you can to keep everything straight up. Any angle at all is going to cause that post to bend, that's a problem. All right, let's take a look. Right. Yep, same spot, perfect, yay. So our crossbody strap is now done. You can put it to the side. So now we're gonna work on the card slot pockets. And over here on the right are my card slot pockets. I have the holes punched out, but I don't have the line between them cut yet. I'm going to do that. You're gonna want a ruler so that you can get a straight line between the center of each hole that are parallel to one another and you can use an X-Acto knife. That's usually the preferred way to do this is an X-Acto knife because then you go exactly from center of hole to center of hole. You can also use a rotary cutter. You just need to be more careful. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm lining up my ruler so that the edge of the ruler goes through two of the center holes. And when I'm gonna rotary cut, I'm actually not trying to touch those holes with my blade because your blade is bigger than you think it is and it's very easy to cut further than you mean to. So I'm just going to start close to one side and go close to the other side. So I don't know if you can see when I open this, I actually haven't reached either of the holes. I'm very close to both holes, but I haven't reached them. That's when I just take my scissors. Cutting a straight line like this with scissors is very difficult, um, but cutting just a teeny tiny nip from the straight line to the circle is not that hard. So it's just a teeny tiny little distance and that way I know I'm cutting only the center and I'm not cutting beyond the circles. So I'm gonna do that for all six of my slits. All right, so now I have all six card slots cut, and ready to go. So now we're gonna flip this over and look at the back of our card slots. Now we're gonna take some double-sided tape about two inches long and we're gonna add a bunch of it. So I'm just gonna do eyeball it, cut a piece off. First, we're going to add a piece of double-sided tape right beneath each one of these slits. So you see here's the slit. I'm just gonna add a piece of double-sided tape right underneath all six of these. So once you have all six of these tapes in place, then you're gonna measure one and a quarter inch up from the bottom edge and put another piece of tape so that it's lined up beneath these. Okay, so we have these, we need to do one more, but before we do that, we have to prep. So I have a silver mark here. This is the slit for our snap tab. Now I'm going to have to extend that because I use the same size per the pattern and my snap tab is going to be a little bit wider than that. But just to get started, I'm going to carefully use a seam ripper to rip right along that mark. And you could use an X-Acto knife for this if you prefer. 
And then I'm gonna flip this over so that I can at least see where that hole is. And then I'm gonna grab a ruler and we're just gonna measure one inch above that slit and put a piece of double-sided tape. It doesn't have to be too exact here, but one inch above that slit, another piece of tape, all lined up together here with the card slots. Okay, and if you've done the pocket pal or anything like that, you've done this before, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our card slot panel here, it's a long piece of fabric, and we're gonna start with this bottom edge right here. We're gonna remove the paper from the tape on this bottom card slot. So once you remove the paper from that, you're gonna take your card slot panel and you're gonna lay it right side down and we're dealing with the bottom edge. So the card slot's going up towards the top of our wallet bag here. And we're going to center it over that tape, making sure you're covering both of the holes on each side. There we go, perfect. And now we're gonna flip this over, carefully making sure we don't lose control of our card slot panel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch right along this bottom edge of the bottom slit. So very bottom slit right here, we're gonna top stitch right underneath it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And the pattern suggests you do not back stitch, but instead you leave the tails long and then you pull them to the back and you tie them in a knot. I do agree with that because of durability, honestly, even with back stitching, if you're using these a lot and moving stuff around, eventually those, those threads can kind of unravel, uh, which would be a mess. So I do suggest keep the tails long on both sides here and then pull them to the back and tie them in knots to secure. Okay, so looking at the back here, you can see I have my bobbin threads. They're nice and long. All I have to do is gently tug on the bobbin thread and then I'll see a little colorful loop of my top thread and I can just pull that top thread back I'm gonna do this on the other side as well. Just tug on the bobbin thread and pull the top thread to the back. And then I just tie three knots on each side to secure it. And then just make sure you trim down the long tails. So do this for both sides. So now we're gonna remove the paper from this bottom piece of tape all the way towards the bottom of our bag. And then pull the lining down gently and flatten it right where you top stitch. So it's nice and, nice and flat and then just push it down onto that tape. So it should look just like this. When I lift this up, the tape is gonna hold it down, okay? So nice and flat. And now I'm gonna remove the paper from the next card slot slit. And then I'm going to pull up on my lining and that double-sided tape is keeping it where I want it. So I'm just making sure it's lined up and straight and still covering all of the dots on my card slots. I'm just gonna push it down. So I'm just pushing it right over that tape, just like that. And before you move on, just make sure this is the right size. So before you stitch down the next one, I made this mistake before, pull up on this bottom card slot that you already stitched and put a card in there. And make sure that the card sticks out just like this. It doesn't cover the next slit, okay? It should not cover the next slit. Let me show you on this finished one over here, the mistake that I made. On this one, I folded the fabric up too high. So you see when I insert this bottom card slot, it covers like the two other slots above it. Meaning when I try to put it in the top here, I can't because of the flap. You see what I'm saying? So just check yourself before you make the same mistake I did. Okay, so now we know this is the right size. So we're gonna once again flip it over, take it to the machine. And now we're working on the second from the bottom card slot. And we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch, just like we did on the bottom one. And we're going to leave the tails long and tie them on the back. So once you have that second pocket top stitch, grab your ruler and you're gonna measure half of an inch up from the bottom folded edge here and cut yourself another piece of double-sided tape. And this tape is going to just be applied right there at that half of an inch mark. There we go. So now let's remove the paper for that. And then fold your lining down gently, always making sure you're trying to keep everything straight. Sometimes that means you might have to kind of angle it a little bit because it likes to kind of go off on its own. All right, so now that is down like that. Now we're gonna remove the paper from the third card slot pocket and then fold the fabric up, keeping it taped where it was, making sure you're covering the dots everywhere. There we go. Push down, make sure it's all nice and flat. There we go. We're gonna flip it over. And now we're going to top stitch right beneath that third card slot pocket. So now we're just gonna continue that a few more times. So once again, we're going to measure half of an inch up from the topmost fold, and we're gonna add a piece of tape there. And once you remove the paper, bring this down so that the fold is beneath that slit you just top stitched. 
and press it onto the tape on the fabric. And now we're gonna remove the paper from the fourth pocket from the bottom. And then keeping that tape in place down here, we're gonna refold the card slot pockets back up, always checking that you're covering everything. You're not letting it miss the holes. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna flip it over. And now we're going to top stitch beneath the fourth card slot pocket. So now for the fifth pocket, measure half of an inch up from the topmost fold on the back and add a piece of double-sided tape and then pull the card slot pocket down and then remove the paper from the second from the top. So the next one. And then pull your lining panel up, making sure it stays stuck down here and it's covering everything on top. Smush it down, there we go. And now let's go ahead and top stitch beneath this second from the top card slot pocket, always making sure we're top stitching beneath the slit, not above it. Okay, once again, half of an inch up from the bottom fold on the very top and add another piece of tape and then fold the lining down just like we've been doing. Cover that tape and then remove the paper from the last piece of tape that's under a card slot. Remember, we still have this one piece up here. We'll deal with that in just a moment. And then we're gonna fold this back up, holding that tape on the bottom in place. We don't wanna lose it. And now we're going to top stitch right beneath the very top slit at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once again, half of an inch up from the top fold on the back here, add a piece of tape. Okay, and then remove the paper from this top piece of tape over here we still have to make the pocket for this top slit. You see, we still have the slit here. That pocket is what we're making right now. So remove that paper and then flip the fabric up. Make sure it's covering everything. Here we go. And then just press it in place like that. And the tape is gonna be all that holds it for just a little bit. So we're gonna pull back the fabric a bit and you can cut just above that tape like that. There we go. So now we have all the card slot pockets ready to go. I will tell you this, if you're worried about fraying and you were good about centering that panel, you can actually lift back the cork here and you can top stitch right along these raw edges. So you just have to kind of pull it away a little bit like this. Uh, I would use a zipper foot, so I'll show you how to do it, but we'll use a zipper foot and we're just gonna top stitch right along this raw edge. So we're not stitching on the cork or anything like that. It's only the lining, but that's going to help add just like a little bit of stitching right here to help prevent any sort of fraying. Now, you're not gonna have to worry about this fraying with use because this isn't touching anything. It's not touching, you know, things, your hands. It's not getting moved around a lot. So really, this is probably the extent of fraying that it will ever have. Another option if you don't wanna stitch is just to flip it over grab some duct tape and duct tape both of the sides along the long edges. But I'm gonna show you how to just use a zipper foot and stitch down these sides. Okay, so I stitched on one side, so now I can rotate this and do the same thing. So now I'm just gonna pull all the cork to the side. If I have any tape here, I can kind of remove it just like that, just so I can see this edge of lining here in the fraying. And I'm going to just stitch as close as I can towards the cork without actually getting my needle on the cork. And I'm just gonna stitch right down the side. Okay, so here's what it looks like on the back. Bit of a mess, but that's okay. On the front though, it looks great. There we go. So now we're gonna return back to our snap tab. So before we install the other side of the snap tab, let's go ahead and top stitch this. Now, top stitching this with this little magnet here is going to be easiest if you use a zipper foot and if you top stitch it with the bottom side up. That's just my advice. If you top stitch it with the top side up, you can definitely still do it with a zipper foot. You're just gonna be very careful. You might have to lift up this bottom edge just a little bit as you go around the magnetic snap. So I'm gonna top stitch around the entire little snap tab here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, carefully using a zipper foot. And I know I'm using this faux leather for the tab, but I think it would actually be really cool if like the bottom side was the cork or the top side was the cork and the bottom side was the faux le leather. Um, I think that would be a cool look. So now that we have the snap tab ready, let's set it to the side and let's install the female end of our magnetic snap. Because remember the male end is on the tab, so we need the opposite over here. So I have a little dot marked here from my template and that is gonna be where I put this. So I'm gonna use my washer to center the hole of the washer over that dot. And then I'm gonna grab a marking tool and just mark in the slits. Go ahead and pull away your card slot pockets. 
I know that they're taped on there, but you can you can pull that away. Because when we install this, we do not want to install it through the card slot pockets because then we won't be able to use them. So make sure the card slot pockets are pulled up and away. And we're going to just seam rip carefully along these very small slits here. It's better for them to be too small rather than too big. And once again, if you want to use a plastic snap, a fashion snap, anything like that, that's going to be a great option here. So then I'm going to insert my female end so that the magnet is on the right side of the material. I'm just going to push the prongs in there. Look how cute that is. Can you see? It's so hard with this busy cork. I'm sorry. That's pretty though. So we're going to flip it over. And this one, I am going to beef up just a little bit more. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of faux leather or cork, whatever you want. And I'm going to mark those same slit marks on my scrap. And very carefully, this time to make sure I don't cut myself, I'm going to use my seam ripper or you can just use some scissors. This one doesn't have to be as perfect as the front. Okay, so I'm going to lift up my card slot panels and I'm going to insert this over my prongs. And the point of this scrap is just to make sure that as we use this, the prongs aren't just pulling on the cork every time because then the cork could eventually rip. Oh, having this extra layer here is going to help. So then I'm going to put the washer over the prongs and then I'm going to separate them because I do prefer to have them go in opposite directions from one another. And then I'm going to grab a piece of this duct tape. I think it's duct tape, some sort of tape. And I'm going to just put it over that metal. There we go. So that way I don't have to worry about the metal eventually wearing down the quilt cotton. Look how cute that is. Now we're going to stitch down our strap. Now, first thing I want you to do is kind of pull you might have to pull this fabric down for a moment and see the slit that I made is way too small for my strap. The slit that I made is about three quarters of an inch, I think. Uh, and my strap is an inch, maybe just a bit over an inch. So I need to extend that. So what I'm going to do is take my one inch ruler and I'm just going to center it over that slit and I'm going to mark a one inch long line right on top of that slit. So I am marking over where it's already cut. And I'm going to grab my scissors, again, moving the fabric out of the way. And I'm just going to extend the width of that opening to one inch. There we go. And then I'll take my tab here and I'll see if I can insert that in there. It can be a tight fit, that's okay, but we need to make sure it goes in there. There we go. So now I'm going to magnetic snap it shut so I can get this exactly the way I want it. All right, so now I have some wiggle room to kind of figure out where I want this to be. Looks like it's pretty centered over the card slots. If you think you're gonna be using a lot of cards here and it's gonna be bulky, you might wanna pull this out just a bit so it's not perfectly flat. So that way as it bulks up, this can still, you know, kind of bow out over it, that's up to you. And now I'm going to top stitch along the top edge of this slit right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, you can pull your fabric back up, reattach it to the tape. So when we top stitch this, we're top stitching through the cork, through the tab, and then also through the lining fabric, which will help keep it in place. All right, there we go. And now we have our magnetic snap. We can put it over our card slots. You can put all kinds of fun stuff in here. Oh, it's so cute. Uh, if you wanna grab some cards, you can go ahead and check all this. All right, so I'm just inserting it one by one in each card slot, making sure they don't disappear into the nothingness, but that they still perfect, 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 perfect. All right, so card slots are done. So now we're gonna work on the ID window and I did just wanna give a little shout out if you have these templates that we sell in the shop, the vinyl clear card pocket templates, you can use either one of these on the pattern if you'd like. So if you wanna do a vertical card slot pocket like this, you can do that or you can use the horizontal one. I'll have a link down below for the video showing you exactly how to use this, but you can just build it and then attach it here if you'd like. Uh, but I'm gonna be using the templates in the pattern today. So getting my piece of vinyl here, I'm gonna go to the wrong side and I'm gonna measure in a half of an inch in from every single one of these four edges and make a mark. Now to cut out this center, you can use an X-Acto knife. Again, X-Acto knife is going to be more exact, <laughs> uh, but I'm just gonna use a seam ripper to rip a hole in the center. And then I'll use my scissors. And what I like to do is I like to cut from the center out to each corner. So I just cut straight from the middle out to the corners first, and then I'll cut the edges. So now when I do the edges, I can just kind of pull back this little triangle piece here and get my scissors in that corner and carefully cut along the straight edge until I get to the other corner. 
and then the little triangle should just fall off. Now I'm gonna flip this back over. You can see I have my nice hole in there. There we go. And I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape and I'm gonna add double-sided tape to all four edges on the wrong side. Now we wanna grab our clear vinyl and you can just take off the paper backing if you have it. And now let's remove one of the papers from the double-sided tape. I like to do the top long edge. Just do that one for now. Now I'm gonna take my clear vinyl and I'm going to center it over the back of my window. There we go. Make sure it gets attached to that double-sided tape on the top. So once you have it the way you want, then you can lift it up and you can remove the paper from the other tape as well. All right, that's looking good. So now figure out which side you want to be the top edge and we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along the very top. And then we're gonna do another row of top stitching a quarter inch below that eighth of an inch seam allowance. So pretty much three eighths of an inch below the raw edge. Do this for the top only. So once again, we left the tails nice and long and I'm gonna pull all of the threads to the back for both of these rows of stitching. And then I'm just going to give them a good triple knot and cut them down just to clean it up. Okay, now we just need to attach this to the bag. So flip this over so you're looking at the wrong side and we're gonna add double-sided tape to the sides and the bottom, but no double-sided tape along the top. That is gonna be left open now. So to make sure this is centered, let's fold our unit in half. Remember, we haven't cut out the holes yet for the zippers. So we're gonna fold this unit in half just like this and I'm trying to find the midpoint on the bottom edge of my marking for the zipper opening. So that's my silver marking. I'm just finding the midpoint right along that bottom edge. And I'm gonna fold my vinyl and I'm gonna mark the midpoint on the top edge of my little window here. There we go. And now I'm gonna measure three quarters of an inch down from this bottom edge of my marking for that zipper opening and I'm gonna center my ruler on it. And then remove the paper from the back of the ID window and center the ID window right along the bottom edge of your ruler so that it's three quarters of an inch down from that zipper opening drawing. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch this in place, but you need to be careful here. We're gonna to top stitch, starting at the top right over here, we're gonna go down an eighth of an inch from the outer edge along the side, the bottom, the other side. And then we're gonna stitch in a little bit. And then we wanna make another row of stitching. But here's the thing, this can become very, very tight. I mean, on one of them, I could not fit my card in because it was just too tight. So you might wanna take a card and just kind of see how much space you're going to need. I would suggest going more than an eighth of an inch away from the inside raw edge. So don't stitch too close to this inside raw edge because if you do, you're not gonna be able to fit your card in there at all. So I'm gonna go I don't know, not a quarter of an inch, but between a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch away from the inside edge, just to make sure I can still fit my card in there. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh, perfect. That's a perfect fit. <laughs> Good. So now I can just wipe down the vinyl so that the mark is gone. Well, that looks adorable, doesn't it? Got my card slots, got my ID window. Ooh, I love it. So now let's insert the rest of our magnetic snaps. We should still have two sets left. So the pattern suggests doing the male ends along the side with the card slot pockets and the female ends along the side with the ID window. So I'm just gonna lay them out so I don't forget that. And if you don't have these marked already, go ahead and grab the template and you're gonna mark four dots along the four corners. I already have them marked. So I'm gonna grab a washer and I'm gonna center my washer over the dot and I'm just going to draw the lines for the slits for my prongs. I'm gonna do this for all four corners. Then I'm gonna grab my seam ripper and I'm going to very, very carefully seam rip along each of those marks. Remember, it's always better for the rip to be on the smaller side rather than on the larger side. All right, once I have those seam ripped, I'm going to just insert all of my magnetic snap pieces where they go. So once you have them all inserted, let's flip this over and look at the back. Now I am going to cut off four pieces of scrap faux leather to help beef up these pieces of hardware. So I'm just gonna mark on them just like I've done previously. 
And now you can use your seam ripper or you can just use the tip of your scissors to cut those slits. This does not have to be as precise as it was on the cork piece for the main part of the bag. Now I'm gonna take these scraps and I'm going to just insert them over the prongs that are sticking up on all the corners. And then I can put my washers on over those prongs and spread the prongs open. Sometimes this is kind of hard to do. It can be a little painful. If it is, go ahead and grab some pliers. Pliers will help. So I like to just snap them together to make sure I didn't make any sort of major error, but that looks good. So now unsnap it, flip it over. And now I'm just gonna cover the back of all of these with some duct tape. You can use Decoville light if you'd like. If you wanna cover it with something that you fuse on, you can do that. We just don't want these prongs to wear down the material. And since we're not using a really heavy, heavy material for the exterior of this bag, it is possible that that can happen. So we wanna just protect, protect our bag. All right, that's looking great. So now we're gonna do the zipper pockets. So let's cut open these little zipper pocket windows. Uh, the best way I find to do it, unless you're using an X-Acto knife, is to seam rip the center of the rectangle. And just like before, I'm just gonna cut right along the center and then I'm gonna cut out to the corners. Same way I did the ID window. And then once I have the inside cut, I can just kind of fold the material back and I can cut along the straight edges. All right, so make sure you cut out the holes for both of the pockets. And now we're gonna prep the zip pockets. And let me just give you a warning. I like to do the zip pockets different than what the pattern says, but because I like to do it differently, it actually does change the end result of the pattern as well. So I'm gonna show you one pocket the way the pattern suggests, and I'm gonna show you the other pocket the way I like to do it, and then you can decide on your own how you wanna do it. Maybe something totally different. So grab all of your lining materials and grab your three zippers and add your zipper pulls. Remember, if you're using zipper tape, the measurement is different than just the zipper length that the pattern gives. Uh, so make sure you pay attention to that. And before we start working with these, let's go ahead and just grab a lighter and melt down the edges of our zipper tape so we don't have to worry about them fraying or making a mess while we're working with them. This just takes a second. All right, there we go. Now all three of our zippers are ready to go. The shorter zipper is gonna go with the smaller woven panels and then the longer zippers will go with the bigger panels. Okay, so we're gonna start out building them all the same way the pattern suggests and then I will install one the way the pattern suggests and then I'll show you how I do the other two uh, my way. So let's grab one of the interior zipper panels and we're going to find the midpoint along the top edge. So just fold it in half. You can use scissors if you'd like and mark the top edge midpoint. Grab one of your zippers for the interior pockets and fold it in half. And let's mark the midpoint on our zipper tape. You can do both sides if you'd like. Now I'm gonna take my zipper and when the zipper closes, it's gonna go to the left and I'm gonna lay my zipper right side up. My lining panel is right side up. Everything is right side up. And I'm gonna mash up those midpoints. Then I'm gonna grab my clips and I'm going to clip these two pieces together. Remember, they're both right side up. And now we're going to baste along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that basted on, grab another lining panel and find the midpoint along the top edge and lay this panel right side up. And then take your unit with the zipper and rotate it so we're looking at the other side of the zipper tape that is not sewn. And zipper right side up, lining panel that's new right side up, match up those midpoint marks and clip together. And now let's baste along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So you can see now when you have your zipper right side up and you open it, you'll see the right side of the lining. So repeat that with your other longer zipper and the interior pocket and do the same exact thing for the exterior zipper pocket with that smaller zipper as well. Okay, so once you have all three of these prepped, we're just gonna start with one. So I'm gonna flip over my main interior panel we're gonna grab some double-sided tape and we're going to add double-sided tape along the long edges on the back of both of our zipper openings. So let's start with the zipper on the card slot pocket. So on the bottom edge here, the edge closest to the card slot pockets, remove the paper from the tape, but only the bottom edge. Now take one of your interior zippers and we're gonna fold it open just like this. Make sure the zipper when it's closing is going towards the left. So it looks just like this. And then we're going to take our unit with the card slot pockets and we're gonna lay it right on top. And we're gonna center 
this over our zipper. So just do your best to get this centered. Don't worry so much about all the sides. Remember, we only have sticky stuff on the bottom edge here, so that's what we're focused on. Make sure you get that zipper pull out of there. Again, just work on getting the zipper tape so that it's centered along both edges and it's centered in this box as well. Remember, if I lift this back, I have my zipper lining spread open. It's not both on one side. It's spread open just like that. Okay, so once that's the way you like it, you can flip this back and remove the paper from the other side of that opening and then just flip this back down and press it down so it's taped in place. Okay, so now the pattern says take both of your lining panels and move them both towards the side with the ID window, which is over here, so away from the card slot pocket. So they're both going that way. Both lining pockets are over here on the opposite side of where we're working. And then it says to just sew along this bottom edge here just this long bottom edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, leaving the tails long so we can pull them through and tie them off. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, once you have that bottom edge sewn, now it says to take both panels and flip them so that they're on the other side now where the card slot pocket is. Flip it over. And now we're gonna sew over the short edges, the top long edge and the other short edge so that it meets up with the previous stitches and then leave the tails long, pull them back and tie them off. Okay, so you can see the pocket is as big as the panel. So because I'm gonna show you a different way to do the pocket on the other side, I am gonna go ahead and just baste along my curved interior here. I know the pocket is longer than it needs to be, but what we wanna do is we wanna baste down these lining panels with the edge of the lining. The way I do the pockets, I actually trim the pockets down so that they're not in the lining at all because I'm trying to reduce bulk but that does give a different look to the bag in the end because the point of the pockets being in the actual seam of the entire bag is so when you fill them, you have a nice, big, rounded, kind of cushy looking purse that looks very, very full uh, and very nice. The way I do it, the pockets end up being smaller so that when you fill them up, it doesn't go all the way to the seams. It gives it a different look. So I'm gonna go ahead and just baste along the edge here where I added this pocket at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm basting down both layers of the lining of the pocket with the inside of the bag. So now that that's basted, now I'm just going to trace the edge of my cork with my scissors. So I'm not cutting the cork, I'm just cutting the lining and so when you do this, you are going to have some extra bulk in your seams. So it's something to think about with how thick your material is. But it gives the bag a really nice full look. When you fill it all up, this whole thing expands at the seam and it looks very, very nice. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It looks kind of chunky, kind of nice, kind of full, um, just, just nice. Okay, the reason I do my pockets a little bit different are because I don't like having too much bulk in the seam because I do like to top stitch this in the end, which Linz does not recommend. Linz says you should not top stitch this bag in the end. I personally like the way it looks, and because I like it, I like the seams to be as thin as possible. So that's something to think about as well. Um, also, this is just quicker for me. So I'm going to take my two remaining pockets and I'm gonna lay them open just like this. And I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to base down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along each side of my zipper tape. What I'm doing is pretty much just flattening this out super flat without ironing. You could also just flip this over and grab an iron and iron it if you'd like, uh, but I just, I prefer to use the sewing machine. So I'm gonna do that for both of these. So this technique of basting down those edges is especially helpful if you're using like a waterproof or water resistant canvas. Uh, something that just doesn't seem to want to lay flat. It's helpful for that. Honestly, it doesn't really matter for the method for the pattern. The method for the pattern will be very easy to do regardless if you're using a waterproof canvas or not, uh, but it's just something that I've gotten used to. So I'm gonna take the remaining interior lining panel and I'm gonna lay it zipper right side up, zipper when closing going towards the left. And I'm going to remove the tape from both edges of my opening over here. And I'm gonna once again, with my cork right side up, I'm going to center this on my zipper. Make sure it's centered on the sides as well as the zipper coils centered in that opening. There we go. And now I'm gonna top stitch along all four edges of this opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can see that my zipper lining panels are open and spread apart from one another. 
So now what I like to do is flip this over and I'm gonna pull the lining panel that's against the card slot panel over here, I'm gonna pull that down and just lay it flat like this. And so you see one lining panel is a lot shorter than the other and I'm okay with that. Because then what I do is gently lift up my lining panel and I'm gonna cut the other longer lining panel but I'm not cutting the cork. So I just kind of lift it up, doesn't have to be perfect. Just about the same spot, there we go. So I cut that down. And then I'm gonna clip these two lining panel sides and bottoms together. And then what I do is I flip it, so I'm looking at the right side of my interior, and I'm gonna pull that interior back, and I actually stitch right over the very edge of the zipper tape, so I'm gonna use a zipper foot here, but right over that edge of the zipper tape. So this is like, I don't know, this is like an inch seam allowance from the edge. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna sew along the bottom at like 3 8 inch seam allowance and I'll go back to the other side and I'll sew up this side at about an inch seam allowance so that I can go over the zipper tape as well and then I'll backstitch at the beginning and the end. So now that I have it stitched down like that, I do actually trim down the side seams so that it's not in the seam allowance at all in the end. So you can see the difference here. Per the pattern, it needs to be in the seam because then it pushes out the seam in the end. It makes it look very full and nice. But if you do it the way I'm doing it, the pocket will not be in the seam, which gives you a, a thinner seam, so it's easier to top stitch if that's the way you wanna go. Um, either way, I think it turns out really, really wonderful. So we can set this interior to the side now. So to mark this inner rectangle, what I like to do is just lay my template over my cut of faux leather just like this and then I just mark the corners. I just mark a little dot in each corner and then I'll grab a small ruler and I'll just connect all the dots to make that inner rectangle. And now I'll cut out that center rectangle the same way that I did with the interior of our bag by just grabbing some scissors and cutting out to the corners. Now we pretty much just want to sew this onto the exterior panel. So I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape and we're gonna put some double-sided tape along the back long edges of this. And I'm just gonna have it go right down the center. And then on our exterior, I'm gonna fold it in half and mark the midpoints. So I'm just gonna fold the whole unit in half and I'm marking the midpoints on the long edges by just cutting a little tiny triangle right at that fold. So now I'm going to match up those midpoint marks on the sides and pinch right in the middle. And I'm gonna mark the midpoint in the middle, just like that. This is with an air erasing marker. And then I'm gonna take my unit here, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I'm gonna mark the midpoint along the top long edge. And I'll do that with a vinyl marker. So then using these midpoint marks, we're gonna measure one and a half inches down from the center midpoint, and we're gonna line up our facing and tape it down. So I already removed the paper from the double stick tape, and I have this tape down, and I can just get rid of that little mark that's on there. So now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine, and we're gonna top stitch around the outer edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. have a bag tag, now's a good time to add it. You can add it anywhere, but I like to add it right below this little zipper facing here. So I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape. And I'm just gonna add it to the back of my tag. And then I'm just gonna use my eyeballs to kind of center it. There we go. And now I'm gonna top stitch my tag in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now we need to open up the center of this here. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to carefully clip inside of our zipper facing. And I like to make a little line like that and then I flip it over and carefully I pull it back and I'm just going to trim behind the zipper facing. It doesn't have to look neat, it doesn't have to be precise, you just don't want to see any of this raw edge material when you look from the front. One thing you're always trying to make sure you avoid is cutting the faux leather facing at any point. You only want to cut the material behind it. 
All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna install the zipper for this the same way I installed the zipper um, the second time on the inside. So I'm just gonna grab my remaining zipper panel and I'm going to add double-sided tape along both long edges of my zipper tape. And now I like the zipper to close to the left, so I'm just gonna make sure the zipper when closed goes to the left and I'm gonna remove the paper from both of these long pieces of double-sided tape and then I'll take my zipper opening here and with the exterior right side up, I'm just going to center this over my zipper tape. Make sure you have overhang on the sides here where my thumbs are and then just make sure the zipper coils are centered in the middle of that rectangle. You can always lift it up and recenter if you need to. Okay, and you can see I have my lining spread open just like this. So now I'm just gonna go top stitch along all four edges of this inner rectangle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm gonna take the top lining piece and fold it down so that it comes down to the bottom one. And then I'm going to cut the bottom lining piece so that it's the same size as the top or at least they meet at the same place down here on the bottom. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna clip along the sides of my two pocket lining panels. And then on the bottom open edge here, I'm just gonna fold that up by about 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to add some clips to hold it in place. And so this bottom edge here is how we're gonna turn the whole thing out in the end. So we don't wanna sew there. So now we're just gonna sew along both of the edges here at about 3 eighths of an inch, half of an inch. If you wanna sew more so that you catch this zipper over here, you definitely can. Uh, it's up to you, but we're gonna sew it down only on the sides, make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end and leave this bottom folded and open. And there we go, so now we open this up. You can see there's a nice hole down here, which is how we'll turn it out later. So now you can add a couple of rivets here if you'd like, but here's the thing, if you add rivets here, I do suggest you use a rivet press um, because it is gonna go through these zipper coils and that can get pretty tricky. So we have the rivets in the kit for you to add to this if you'd like, but I'm not going to uh, simply because it is kind of messy and I have problems with it. I, I The previous one I had to get the rivet press out in order to make it successful. The rivets just, they bent sideways and I couldn't get them to work. So you can give it a try if you'd like. If you have a rivet press, then that's a great way to go. Otherwise you can just leave it. I don't think it needs it. So I'm just gonna leave that. And speaking of rivets, I forgot to add the rivets to this card slot pocket. So I'm going to pull all the lining out of the way. Luckily, we can do that. And we're going to add the little tiny rivets to the corners here, which are really cute. So I'm going to grab a marking tool and I'm just going to mark in the top corners and in the bottom corners. I'm going to grab our itty bitty rivets and my hole punch and I'm gonna punch out the holes where my marks are, making sure at no point am I going through one of the lining pieces from the zipper. And I'm gonna grab my little rivets, my itty bitty ones. I'm just going to snap those into place in those holes. This is completely optional, it's just cute. And if you have the box, then you have the rivets to give it a try. All right, there we go. And since I'm not using these for the other pocket, I have a couple of cute little extra rivets to add wherever I want. So now I'm once again going to grab the rivet set. I'm going to use the side that has the smaller little bowl in it. And I'm just going to lay down my rivet on top of there and take my pressing tool, make sure it's perfectly straight. And then I'm just going to whack it with the hammer. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that for all four of these. All right, so now we have the inside done. We have the outside done. We just have to put it together. So first things first, make sure you open the zipper most of the way. I don't like to have it all the way just in case this tries to get in the seam. So most of the way, open that zipper on the exterior. Same thing with the lining ones, just put the zippers in the middle. So let's flip this. We're gonna have the side that has the card slots is gonna go right sides together with the side that has the facing. So just like that. So match up all the edges and clip in place. All right, once you have all of them clipped together, make sure that the pocket over here on the exterior, just keep that out of the way. Don't let that accidentally get sewn into a seam. You might wanna just kind of clip it or something to make sure nothing happens to it. And we're gonna sew around the entire edge at a half inch seam allowance. So once we have that sewn, 
we're going to trim the seam allowance in half so that it's a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And if you're using thick material, you can definitely go around all of this one more time uh, just to reinforce those stitches and smooth out any wonky edges. And then on the corners, we're just gonna cut little, little notches, just light notches about halfway into the seam. Nothing, nothing too wild. So you see this corner over here, this is where I kept the pocket out of the seam, and this corner over here is where we sew the pockets into the seam. So it's quite a bit thicker over here. However, if you're not going to top stitch, then that's okay that this is thick. It's Once it's full and you know you have a bunch of stuff in it, it's going to look great. Um, if you are going to top stitch, then you have to think about that because this is going to be pretty thick, and if your machine can handle it, then, then you're fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this whole unit right side out through that opening in that zipper, there we go. And for this one, I will leave it untop stitched just so we can see the difference in them. Both look really good. The pattern is written for you to not top stitch it. So remember that. The intent is to not top stitch. That's how the pattern is probably going to look the best. So I'm going to pull out that lining pocket that I just pulled everything through and I'm just gonna kind of tug on the sides over here and the raw edges should just fold down in on themselves. So I'm just gonna let them do that. Make sure no raw edges are peeking out. I'm gonna grab some clips, and I'm going to clip along this folded edge, just tucking in those raw bits. All right, so now I'm gonna top stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, once that's stitched, just push it inside of here, just like that, zip it up. Give it all a good press. Maybe you want to press it with your iron from the other side. But once it's full, it's going to hold its shape really nicely. So let's just close it and look what, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, isn't that cute? That is so cute. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is put the handle on the top. So let's open this up all the way. So you're gonna want your bag, your handle, your two D-rings, and then your four medium-sized rivets. And here's the thing about the handle. First, let's mark the midpoints. So fold this in half by just snapping it shut at the magnets and then flattening it out. So here we go. So I'm gonna use an air racing marker and I'm just gonna mark right along the edge where these midpoints are because I'm gonna use a ruler to measure this out. Let's open it back up. So when you install this strap, you can install it pretty much just flat like this which gives you this look in the end. You see, it's very, very flat. Or you can scoot it up a little bit so that it sticks up, which gives you this look in the end, which I really like. So I'm gonna tell you the measurements for this look. So I'm gonna measure in one inch from this edge over here, and I'm making sure it's centered on my midpoint mark, and I'm gonna mark a dot, one inch in. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, one inch in from that midpoint. Okay, and just to double check, I'm gonna refold this again and make sure those dots are on the top of the fold. All right, we're good, they're still up there. So now I'm gonna grab a hole punch and I'm gonna punch a hole right at that dot. And then I'm gonna grab my strap and I'm gonna take the leftmost hole and I'm gonna push my rivet through that, push it through the hole that's in my bag, flip it over to the cork side and add the cap. Now make sure your strap is nice and straight and then you can mark the placement for the other hole, just like that. Move the strap out of the way, grab your hole punch and punch out that hole. All right, so now grab a D-ring, thread it onto your strap so the flat side is on the bottom all the way in. Grab another rivet, put it through the strap and then put it through that second hole and snap it in place on the back. There we go. So now you see you have this nice little D-ring here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move up my other end of the strap and I'm gonna match up this first hole, so the hole all the way on the right, I'm gonna match it up with that first mark and then I'm just gonna kind of flatten out the end over here, make sure it's straight and then I'm gonna mark the second dot. There we go, so now I have both of them marked. Move the strap out of the way. And I'm gonna punch the hole out of both of these dots. So now let's take a rivet, insert it in the innermost hole, and then put it through the material, flip it over, put the cap on the cork side, 
grab the other D-ring, thread that onto the end, take your last rivet through the final hole, through the main bag, and add the cap. There we go. So now we have this cute little handle, just like that. Isn't that sweet? So now you're going to install this the same way we install the other rivets. This time though, use the bigger hole. So remember this has a small hole and a big hole. Make sure you're using the big hole side up, put your rivet in there, and then just hammer it down just like we did previously. However, if you decide that you love the look of rivets, maybe you've never worked with them before, but you don't really like hammering, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to go check out a rivet press. A rivet press is one of those extra expenses. It is an investment. I know a lot of people think, I don't know if I'll use it enough, but do you see how easy that is? I mean, I just push down on it with very little effort and my rivet is perfect. You don't have to worry about them going off to the side or anything like that. So I, I would say most people who invest in a rivet press who make bags are pretty happy with that investment. It's not one of those tools that you buy and then you never use. So if, if you like the look of this, I do, do encourage you to consider getting a press. It just makes everything so much easier. All right, so now all we have to do is grab our crossbody strap, which is so cute, and hook that onto the D-rings up top. And look how stinking cute this little bend and snap is. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys love making this. This is such a fun pattern. Alrighty, so I'm gonna be honest. Here's the version I did first where I top stitched the edges. Here's the version I did today where I did not top stitch the edges. This version definitely looks better. The one without the top stitching. So shocking, <laughs> Linz was right. Linz is always right. Um, so yeah, the version without the top stitching I think definitely looks better. It definitely looks more fluffy. Um, if you're worried about like these seams sucking in on themselves, just make sure you roll it out really well. You can press it with your iron or you can grab some clips to kind of hold that seam in place the way you want it. But you can see, like it just looks really nice. It looks really nice without the top stitching. The top stitching definitely does flatten it out just a little bit too much. Um, and as you fill it, and also here's the thing, top stitching something like this is not always the easiest thing. We have curves here. These seams can be kind of thick if you uh, had the pocket go all the way into the seams. So top stitching this can be a little stressful. And if you're not really skilled at top stitching and like sewing a straight line, you can get kind of frustrated with how it looks. So just skip it. Just don't do the top stitching. And it looks, I mean, it looks better without the top stitching. So as you see, when we open up this one, this time we have the card slot pockets on the other side where they're supposed to be the ID window over here, big pockets. You can hold lots of stuff, hold all your, all your necessities. I just love this so much. I'm so happy I finally got to make it. It was definitely worth the wait. So I'm really, really happy we got to finally put this pattern on the channel. <laughs> so thank you so much for sewing along with me today. I hope you love this pattern as much as I do. I hope if you're part of the monthly subscription box, you're excited about the material you used. Remember, you can switch out whatever you'd like. Everything is a recommendation, a suggestion, but it, you get creative, switch it out. If you're not loving the green material, then hold that for another project, put something else on the exterior. Luckily, all these cuts are pretty small, so you can definitely find scraps of whatever material you have at home and make it your own. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.